Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, brothers and sisters, I don't have to tell you, I hope, that things are winding down. Amen. We're getting closer and closer to that day. Amen. I don't think the focus should be so much on what's going on in the Ukraine and what's going on in Russia as far as a war or conflict between those two nations as much as how Israel is going to be pulled into it. You hear what I just said? Israel is going to be pulled into this, folks. And we're watching it happening. This is not about Russia. This is not about the Ukraine. This is not even about the United States. Are you listening to this preacher? This is about the prophecy of the scripture being fulfilled. Amen. Shouldn't be listening to what the news is saying. You should be listening to what the Bible is saying. Amen. How many know God's word's going to come to pass? Amen. Oh, yeah. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for giving to us, Lord, the truth of your word. Thank you for speaking to our hearts in this hour. Father, we pray that you will bless and that you will anoint not only your servant as we minister your word, Lord, but that you will anoint your people to hear your words. We ask that you bless, Lord, at this time. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you'd like to follow in the reading of God's word, we're going to begin reading in Zechariah. Zechariah. The 14th chapter, beginning with verse 1. Praise the Lord. Behold, the day cometh. Is that what it says? Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. Not just any day. Amen. This is the day of the Lord. And brothers and sisters, that day is coming quickly. The day of the Lord is coming. And thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. In the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Russia. Against China. Against the Ukraine. Against North Korea against the United States of America? Is that what he said? He said, I will gather all nations against Jerusalem. Jerusalem, people. How many know that Jerusalem is being drawn into this war? Prophecy must be fulfilled, people. Putin just began to recruit the Syrians into this war. And Israel and Syria have been at it for some time now. People, it's coming. It's all coming to pass. Amen. It's going to happen just as the scripture says. Who is it that's doing the gathering? I, the Lord, will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Hmm. 
God is going to gather the nations against Jerusalem people. His city. Yeah. But if you understand what God is doing, he is laying a trap, a snare. I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Wouldn't it be something instead of this war with Russia in the Ukraine? Wouldn't it be something if we were already fast forward to where Russia was attacking Israel? Then how sober would you be? It's on the doorstep, people. Years ago, the Lord told my pastor, he said, the bear is not dead. He's only wounded. Russia will attack Israel and Russia will attack the United States of America. That's what the Lord told my pastor. God says, I will gather the nations against Jerusalem to battle. And the city shall be taken. And the houses rifled. And the women ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Are you listening? And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall move toward the north and half toward the south. That's right. Jesus Christ is going to set his feet on the Mount of Olives. Amen. Oh, I thought he was dead. No, he's not dead. He's alive. Amen. He's coming back, people. He is coming back. Just like he said. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe also in me. You believe in God, but believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. I'm not a liar. I go away to prepare for you a place. And if I go away to prepare for you a place, he said, I'm coming back to receive you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. Jesus says, this gospel, the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Then shall the end come. He didn't say that everyone was going to listen. He didn't say there was going to be a worldwide revival. He didn't say that we we're going to experience a great revival and souls are going to be saved. He said it was for a witness. Just like the two witnesses that are going to preach during the tribul or during the last part of the tribulation hour. That's for a witness. Doesn't mean they're going to listen, people. 
God oftentimes send the prophets with the word. They never listen. The people heard the word, but they wouldn't do it. Just because the gospels preach means nothing. If you don't respond. Amen. <clears throat> Listen to what this says. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. See, this goes along with what we just read in Zechariah. Then let them which are in Judea flee into the mountains. Right? Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Amen. This is when Jesus returns and sets his feet on the Mount of Olives. Now, what does this have to do with? And that's what I want to deal with today. The abomination of desolation. The abomination of desolation. That's what this is all about, people. Amen. When you see Russia attacking Ukraine and all that's going on right now, understand that this is all leading up to the abomination of desolation. Amen. Mark chapter 13, verse 14. But when you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand. Let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Now he's saying the same thing in this context as he was saying in the last context. So we understand that at the time when God says to them, don't return back to your house to get your things, flee, 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 flee. Flee into the mountains. We understand that this is, this is at the time when Jesus Christ is going to set his feet upon the Mount of Olives and he's going to destroy the Antichrist in his coming. How do we know that? The scripture says with the brightness of his coming, right? Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So when the Lord returns to set his feet upon the Mount of Olives, people, think about it. He's going to destroy that wicked. Amen. By the way, this is at the same time there's going to be a great earthquake when the Lord sets his feet upon the Mount of Olives. And the scripture says in the book of Revelation that this earthquake is going to cause a world or global earthquake that's going to bring down every city of all the nations, which is Mystery Babylon. Are you listening? Well, your mind's awful small if you still think America is Mystery Babylon. <laughs> you need to get a bigger understanding, a bigger vision. This thing is global. It's worldwide. Mystery Babylon, people, is the world system. All the cities of all the nations of all the world are going to be destroyed in one hour. 
in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, they crucified him. And it seemed like they defeated him at the cross, but he's coming back, amen. And when he sets his feet upon the Mount of Olives, he's going to destroy Mystery Babylon. Anybody listening? Praise the Lord. Whose side are you on? <laughs> Whose side are you on? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out. Measure it not. It's not included. For it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot. Forty and two months. That's just before the Lord returns. Are you listening? God says, don't include them in the measurements. They, they're going to be destroyed. Amen. Revelation chapter 13, verse 14, or verse 4. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 40 in what? Two months. That's the same amount of time, brothers and sisters, that the Gentiles are going to be given to tread Jerusalem. Anybody listening? See how the scripture lines up? Do you see how it all works together? 40 in two months. Three and a half years. Anybody listening? It's the last three and a half years of the tribulation hour. Dear God. Revelation 17 and 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me saying unto me, come hither. I will show thee the judgment of of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. That's not just the United States. Hello. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. What do you think, people, Israel's doing today? They're fornicating with all the nations. In the Bible, it is Israel that is called the great whore. How many know that? God talked about the Jews, and then he said, or he was talking about, um, excuse me, he was talking about Judah, your sister, has also played the harlot. Judah is the Jews. 
Anybody listening? All of Israel went a whoring from God, and there was only a remnant left. And then she played the harlot. Yeah. By the time Jesus Christ showed up, the Jews had become so corrupted that he said to them, you're not children of Abraham. That's how corrupt they had become, people. He said, you're not children of Abraham. He said, you're the children of the devil. That's what he said to them. Hello. They had become so corrupt and so racist. They were racist against the Samaritans. They were in cahoots with Rome. Anybody listening? Not a whole lot's changed. Hello. Not a whole lot has changed. They call themselves Jews. He said they're the synagogue of Satan. Sounds like they're worshiping the beast already, aren't they? They're going to lead the rest of the world to worship the beast. Amen. It's amazing how these charismatics are flocking to those that call themselves Jews today. Amen. We see the one thing that marks the great mother of harlots, this whore of Babylon, is fornication. Spiritual and physical fornication. Amen. Upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. And with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Who is it that murdered God's people? It was Israel. People. It was the mother of harlots. Dear God, they're convincing, deceiving the masses today. Anybody listening? To follow them in witchcraft, to follow them in sorcery, to follow them in hypocrisy, to follow them in worshiping the beast. Amen. Did you know today, those that call themselves Jews, did you know that they're not looking for a, um, they're not looking for a savior? No, they're looking for a king. Ask them. They're looking for a king. They're looking for a king that will come and fight for them. It's what they're looking for, people. What do you think is going to show up? That wicked. Going to start out with a small people, Israel. Going to take over the whole earth. Going to take over the whole world. God says, I'm going to draw the nations down against Jerusalem. I'm going to draw them against my own city. I'm going to set a snare. I'm going to set a, set a trap. They think they're so smart. God says, keep coming. <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on. Keep coming. Got something for you. <laughs> I got something for you. The scripture says that every 
enemy is going to be put under his feet. Literally, people. When he sets his feet upon the Mount of Olives, every enemy will be under his feet. He's going to set all rule. Amen? He's going to set down all rule. He's coming to set up his kingdom for a millennial reign for a thousand years. Think about this. All the cities of all the nations of the world, the cities are crumbling in one hour. You talk about a chain reaction. Do you know that there are faults right now on the Mount of Olives? That's right. There are faults. But if you were to able to, to trace those faults throughout the earth, you'd find they're all interconnected. Anybody listening? It's not going to be some magic trick. God's just going to make all the cities fall at one time. No. The, this is already prepared in the earth. There are already fault lines throughout the whole earth that are already interconnected. When Jesus sets his feet upon the Mount of Olives, like a domino effect, it's going to cause all the nations to fall in one hour. And there'll be shipmen that'll be out in the sea all over the earth. And they're going to see the cities coming down and they're going to see them smoke going up and burning. And they're going to cry out, alas, alas, that great city. Listen, brothers and sisters. When the Lord looks at this earth, he sees one city. That's what he sees. One city. Just like the city of God. See, the Antichrist, the, the horror Babylon, mystery Babylon, that's Satan's city. And it's all going to come down in one hour. <laughs> we serve an awesome God, people. See, Jesus doesn't do things small. Amen? When he sets his feet upon the Mount of Olives, all of his enemies will be subdued. And even those Gog and Magog, the nations that will still be on the earth in the millennial reign, they'll still be under his power. They won't be under his power in the sense they want to do what they're doing, but they won't dare to fight against the Lord during that time. But the scripture says Satan will be loosed out of prison for, for uh, after a thousand years being bound, and it says he'll go out to deceive the nations. Amen. So don't marvel, brothers and sisters, who this woman is. Don't marvel at who, um, even who the Antichrist or the man of sin is. All these things are coming to pass, and they will come to pass soon enough. And really, the Lord doesn't tell you and I to focus on those things, does he? He tells you and I to be making ourselves ready. He tells you and I to watch and pray, right? That we may be accounted worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man. See, if you start getting your eyes on all the things that are going on around you, you'll get distracted and you'll miss it. You'll miss it. That's what Satan wants. He wants to distract you. Amen. Revelation 18 and verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having a great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils. And the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean, hateful bird. You think that's America, people? For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. It's become global. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacy. She has power over America. 
Did you know Israel seduces the United States of America under its power every single time a new administration is in place? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they control the sway of the nations. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. All nations. They become drunk. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth have waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Listen, this is the message God has for us today, if we'll listen. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. That you be not partakers of her sins. And that you receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven. And God hath remembered from the past her iniquities. How many know God has not fully destroyed Israel? There's going to be a remnant saved. Don't forget that. But God has not brought Israel to the judgment of what it is intended. Jesus said, you see not all these stones, not one stone will be left upon another that won't be thrown down. Do you know Jerusalem? When Jesus was in Jerusalem, when he said that, after he said that, 70 A.D., was not the full destruction of the temple. How many know that? The temple has not been destroyed, and really, please don't be looking for a magnificent temple like Herod's temple or the temples of, of the past. Just like they did this sacrifice recently and got all dressed up in their unclean white garments. Most likely the, the temple will be, well, the Bible calls it an abomination. So don't expect it to be magnifical. Don't expect it be, to be made even closely unto like what even Herod built. Don't, don't look for that. People are saying, well, I don't understand how this temple is going to be built, reared up. How's it going to be built in, in such a short time? It's not. It's not. It's going to be so ridiculous, brothers and sisters. Not to the world, I guess, but, to, well, you know, when they did that sacrifice, nobody showed up. Even Benjamin Netanyahu, he didn't even show up for it. People all over the earth were invited, but hardly anybody showed up. It was an abomination. But can you see the man of sin, the wicked, sitting in Jerusalem in a temple that is fit for uh, not a king, but fit for I don't know what. I don't know what they're going to build, but I have a feeling comparing to the, the temples of the past, I believe it'll be like a shanty. God calls it an abomination. Amen. Amen. When that wicked sits in the temple showing himself he's God, Jesus is going to set his feet upon the, on the Mount of Olives and in the brightness of his coming, he's going to destroy that wicked right there on the spot. You going to be with Jesus when he returns? He's coming back with ten thousands of his saints. He's returning on white horses. Oh, yeah. It's going to happen, people. It's going to happen. Amen. Revelation 18 and 17, for in one hour so great riches come to naught. Every shipmaster and all the company and ships, sailors, not talking about just around the United States people, come on. All the ships, all the shipmasters, all the sailors, as many as trade by the sea, stood afar off. Doesn't mean they're just around the United States. Come on. We get tunnel vision here in the United States, don't we? We think that we're the only nation on the earth. And yet the Bible never mentions America. 
They stood afar off and they cried when they saw the smoke of her burning. Saying, what city is like unto this great city? Can you just see the picture of all those that are out in the sea on their way to bring their wares, to bring their product, bring, you know, all their different cargo to these cities and they can't drop off their cargo. There's nowhere to port. Anybody listening? There's nowhere to port. There's no place to birth. There's no place for them to port. Amen. They got nowhere to bring their goods. Cities are going to fall in one hour, people. All the cities of all the nations. Now, we know there's going to be something spared because there's still Gog and Magog. There's still Tubal, Meshach, that God's going to deal with after the millennial reign. He's not going to gather all the nations down to Jerusalem because the scripture says he's going to turn back some of them. Even Egypt is mentioned during the millennial reign. How many know that? Oh, yeah. <sighs> Revelation. Well, let's let's go to Psalm. I want you to see something. Remember, Jesus is setting his feet upon the Mount of Olives, right? Psalm 110, verse 1. And the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Amen. Luke chapter 20, verse 42. And David himself saith in the book of Psalms, Jesus is quoting what I just read to you in the book of Psalms. And David himself saith in the book of Psalms. How'd you like to have the Lord speak of you like he spoke of David? Uh You imagine that? Jesus Christ, the son of God, is mentioning David. And David himself saith in the book of Psalms, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. That's what he's doing, people. That's what he's doing. He's going to subdue all under his feet. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Amen. He's coming. He's coming. The king of kings. The Lord of lords. The king. Hello, people. The king. The king of kings. And the Lord of lords. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I feel his presence. He's the king. He's the king. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The king is coming. 
the King is coming. Amen. Oh, yeah, he is. He is. He is. He is. He is coming. Make straight the way, people. Make his path straight. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. The king is coming. Came as a lowly Nazarene the first time. But not this time. Every eye is going to see him. <sighs> what a day that's going to be. The day of the Lord cometh. The brightness of his coming is going to destroy his enemies. I said to you the other day, the, very, the scripture says the very eyes in their eye sockets are going to vaporize in their very sockets because of him, because of his glory, because of his presence. He's brighter than the sun shining at noon. I'm sure to the world he'll look like a nuclear weapon. He'll look, it'll look, probably will look nuclear as the Lord returns with his saints. Light, people. Light flashing. Glory to God. Recently they said in the Ukraine... He hasn't met, hasn't made the media yet, but, and we don't know how true it is, but I believe God does things like this. We read it in the Old Testament. They said there was a flash of lightning in the middle of the night. The next morning they woke up and all these military uh, apparatus, all this, uh, all these tanks and every, all, it was all destroyed. And the soldier that was a Christian was in the midst of that before the lightning struck or the lightning flashed. And he, he called his minister, I believe it was, he called his pastor and asked him to pray with the church for him. He says he didn't look, think he was going to make it out. He said that it looked like that Russia was bigger than they were and that they weren't going to get out. It was an unfair battle. And so that church went to pray him. And he reports that that night there was a flash across the sky. Anybody listening? And so I was listening to the, the brother there that was giving the, the testimony of what happened. And he reminded everybody about Gideon, what God had done for Gideon. I believe we're living in those last days when we're going to, we're, li we're living in the time. We're going to begin to see the signs in the heavens. Things going to happen, people. Oh yeah, we're, we're going to see the power of God in these last days. And I think it'll even surpass the things God did in the days of old. And I'm not talking about altogether the seals being released and what's coming on the earth. I'm talking about deliverance. I'm talking about God moving and working and helping and Amen. But remember, it wasn't without prayer. They prayed. They prayed. But uh, it didn't make the news. It didn't make the news. And then there was another situation in Ukraine where they were praying and some Russians were on their way to some some designated area and they met up with another group of Russians, but I guess it was at night and they thought it was Ukraine and they started firing on their own people. Again, we see that in the old Testament. Gideon. God sent confusion into their midst and they started firing upon one another. Anybody listening? Glory to the lamb people. Have you been praying for these folks in Ukraine? Because I'll tell you right now, it's, it's not just what's going on. It's not a just war. It's not a, it's not a fair war. These young Russians that are being sent from Russia don't even know they're going to war. They've been lied to. 
And I've listened to some of their testimonies. They look very sincere. They were told to go over to Ukraine for some training or whatever, and they got over there and they were stuck. They were even threatened prison if they didn't fight. In other words, they'd be considered AWOL. That's how Putin runs his regime. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Didn't realize we had so many scriptures. Let's get to the next one. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of or to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Listen, please listen. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Literally. When he sets his feet on the Mount of Olives, people. Amen. That's what this is talking about. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is expected, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22. And he hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Do you see the pattern? Do you see the resemblance of the scriptures? Do you see what they're all saying? The same thing, right? They're all saying the same thing. And last but not least, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 7. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownedest him with glory and honor and to set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all things subject under him, he left nothing. Did you hear that? He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him, but what do we see? But we see Jesus. Do you see Jesus? But we see Jesus. We don't yet see everything under him yet, but we see Jesus. Who is made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory. To make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings, bringing many sons unto glory. For both he that sanctifieth and they that are what? Sanctified, set apart are all of one. Sounds like the marriage. Sounds like the bride. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them friends. Is that what it says? Children. Servants. 
adopted children. Is that what it says? He's not ashamed to call them brethren. Brethren. Same DNA. You must be born again. Same DNA. He's not ashamed to call us his brothers. Same DNA, people. If you're not born again, if you're not born into this thing, you're not in it. You have to have his DNA. Amen. Glory to God. I've met a lot of people professing to be saved, being Christians, but they've never been born again. Amen. How about you? You meet people all the time. They don't, my spirit don't bear witness with your spirit. If you were born again, I, it would bear witness with my spirit that you're my brother, that you're my sister. But your spirit doesn't bear witness with my spirit. Something's off. Anybody listening? Listen to this. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. Not to everybody, not to everyone in the church, to my brethren. In the midst of the church, will I sing praise unto thee. In the midst of the church. Not to the church as an entirety. But in the midst of the church, there's a remnant. There's brethren. There's sons. Praise the Lord. He's going to return with his sons. He's going to return with his brethren. And Babylon will be destroyed once and for all. And that wicked will be destroyed in the brightness of his coming. <clears throat> Whose side are you on? <laughs>